This video would not be possible if not for help from Jeremy, who provided his collection of pictures for this project. So if you know a guy named Jeremy, why not buy him an Orbitz? Remember Orbitz. It was fun to look at, not so great to drink. And now, on with the show. The World Water Park exists today as one of the world's largest indoor water parks. It's arguably West Empton Mall's greatest attraction. Although, personally, when I was growing up, I always preferred Fantasyland. And that turned out to always be the same argument between my brother and I. How were we going to spend that day of our summer vacation? How would we use our Super Summer Attractions Pass? Would we go to the amusement park or the water park? It wasn't like there was a bad option either. We were literally arguing about whether we'd be spending our day at the world's largest indoor amusement park or the world's largest indoor water park. And, of course, we'd always end up spending time walking around the world's largest mall as well. So yeah, first world problems, I know. And even the times when I would lose the debate, thus losing the opportunity to spend the day riding the Drop of Doom, my consolation prize wasn't so bad. The original Blue Bullet, Cannonball Run, and Geronimo's Jump would make up for it nicely. But in my eyes, those slides and the rest of the World Water Park were really only second best. Still great, mind you, but there was one attraction which stood above all the rest. And no, I'm not talking about the ride where you crash through the windows overlooking the World Water Park. I'm talking about the Raging Rapids Lazy River Slide. Today, Tucked behind what once operated as the world's tallest indoor bungee tower lies the Sunrunner. A yellow tube slide which is one of only two slides in the park where more than one person can ride together at once. I mean, it's pretty fun, but it is what lies in the shadow of the Sunrunner that I'm talking about. The World Water Park opened its doors for the first time as part of the mall's Phase 3 expansion in 1986. The sensation of wet rubber beneath your feet Wet rubber? Wait a minute, what is this? It is the opening of West Edmonton Mall's water park, and it is wild. The spectacle that was West Edmonton Mall was at its peak. Everything existed as it was meant to. The animals, the submarines, the ball machines, and of course, the world water park. Okay, so maybe at that point, it didn't have an oversized looping water slide, but it was still the best water park in existence. And to me growing up in the 80s and 90s in Edmonton, the best of the best was the Lazy River Slide. Before the World Water Park ever had a bungee tower or a non-stop wave for surfing, back when the park had white lightning and still had tanning lights and tropical macaws as part of its daily attractions, lived the heyday of the park and Raging Rapids. In order to slide the Raging Rapids, you needed to wait in line in order to procure a tube. Which, like the Sun Runner, was a requirement for this slide. You then walked to the top of the loading area. Finally, you'd get settled in the waiting pool, and you were presented with two different route options. The original Raging Rapids water slide had not one, but two places where you could choose which way you wanted to go. The first of which was right at the beginning. Regardless of which way you went, you would encounter virtually the same experience. After floating along a long, lazy, looping path, you would eventually be delivered to a steep drop into the darkness. It was just enough to amp up your anticipation, without being so crazy that younger sliders wouldn't want to go. After another short float, the two paths would converge once again into another lounging pool. It was here where many would spend most of their time. There wasn't really a time limit for how long you could stay on the slide. You could, at times, stay in this area as long as you wanted to, though oftentimes the slide attendants would eventually move you along. Speaking of the slide attendants, unlike other slides in the World Water Park, which have slide patrol at the beginning and end of each slide, the Lazy River acquired attendants throughout the attraction. With so many people all trying to navigate the slide at once, 
attendants were required to control the flow of the riders. Once you decided to continue your way down the slide from the central pool, you were once again presented with a choice of two nearly identical routes. Either option put you on a shorter, albeit more raging path, which would eventually converge with the other in front of the attraction's largest slide. A switchback slope which would take you to the final cave-like cavern. And that's another thing about this slide. The slopes that took you down to the level below drew you under a waterfall. You could forget about staying dry, even on the lazy river ride. Those waterfalls were pretty much unavoidable. After the final slope, there was a small pool at the bottom of the slide, where the largest waterfalls on the slide would drop. However, lounging in this area was not really possible, as other riders, those who weren't lucky enough to have rented a tube for the day, were anxiously waiting to snag your tube so they could embark on their own trip down the raging rapids. And one of the many slide attendants would make sure you handed over your tube promptly. As mentioned, other slides in the park have one slide patrol person at the beginning and one at the end. On the paired slides, this averages out to one patroller per slide, even though they watch two entries. I bring that up because Raging Rapids was quite different. On busy days, the slide required not one or two slide patrollers, but rather as many as five or even six people to operate the attraction. They were stationed throughout the slide, which, by the way, had its own terminology. The top of the slide had two swirling paths. These were called the vortexes. Midway down the slide, the middle pool was aptly called middle. The final location where the two paths converged was called the jam. Then halfway down the steep switchback slide was the turn. The vortexes had one or two people on patrol. This person was there to manage and control the flow of sliders down the first set of slopes. Then in the middle, there was another attendant. They would make sure that the people were neither staying in the middle too long, nor rushing down either path too quickly. This person was within the eyeline of the next person on patrol, at the jam. Jam would tell middle if they needed to slow down the flow of sliders coming from either direction. Jam would also be in constant visual communication with the slide patrol stationed at turn. Again, controlling flow down the fastest and most dangerous slide on the Raging Rapids. Turn's job would be to catch, as best they could, those who came sliding down from jam. Now, the reason the person stationed at turn was so important is that this is where nearly all the injuries on the Raging Rapids occurred. As if the steep slope heading directly towards a hairpin turn and concrete wall wasn't dangerous enough in itself, there was another issue. On the way down, the right-hand side slightly narrowed into the slide's path. Not a lot, mind you, but enough. And hitting this wall often resulted in tubes being overturned and people getting hurt. So both the jam and turn positions were very important in guiding the tubes down a safe path. Finally, at the end of the ride, there was one final position for slide patrol. It was they who would crack the whip to get you out of the pool, and keep that line of people waiting for a tube moving along. It goes without saying that it was an involved and expensive process, implementing the manpower to keep the slide going. But it was an awesome slide from beginning to end. And while realistically, only two distinct paths existed from top to bottom, it was the ability to choose twice along the way that made the possibilities seem endless. And while one route was technically slightly longer, the difference was negligible. Any path down the Raging Rapids was a good one. But if you talk to those who remember the Raging Rapids slide, even they may not remember it being like this. And that's because the original slide, which was, again, the best in the park, only existed in its true form for around the first half of its life. The slide eventually became a maintenance nightmare. Upkeep was getting rather expensive on the solid concrete structure, so they had to make some changes. The decision was made to replace a segment of the slide with the traditional plastic style used on the rest of the slides in the park. Now, there was only one area to choose which way you wanted to go, at the very beginning of the slide. Raging Rapids would start off exactly the same, with each path taking a rider to a vortex. But this is where things changed. While one path continued as it always did, at least for a little longer, the other directed the slider into a tube tunnel. This would result in a faster journey, directly to the end of the slide. The other path, however, took a slower, lazy path, essentially the same as its original, at least until it got to middle. At that point, it too ended in its own tube tunnel to the end of the slide. This iteration saw the final switchback slope removed, and, as mentioned, it eliminated the midpoint choice of paths through the attraction more than half of the experience was completely stripped away, and it just wasn't the same slide anymore. But even this version of the slide lasted only so long, 
before it was changed yet again. This time, it was as simple as removing the last remaining choice for the rider. Unfortunately, it was the one which most closely resembled its original version. The slide had been stripped of everything it once was. All that existed was a single vortex and a blue tube slide to the bottom. It just really wasn't popular anymore. The once long and relaxing slide, interrupted with faster sections and thrilling drops to the level below, may have at one point been worth waiting for a tube and making the long trek to the top, but not anymore. Ridership had plummeted. And even at this point, after all the changes to the slide, there were still maintenance problems. It seems there are issues regulating the level of chlorine in the attraction. And it was right around this time that the park, and the mall in general, were making some changes. The decision was made to move away from the constant cycling of attractions in the area just outside of the glass which overlooked the World Water Park, with that entire area being reworked to add more retail space. These changes also required the shifting of some office space, and when looking for a place to put a few more offices, it made perfect sense to sacrifice what was now one of the least popular slides in the park, one which was still causing maintenance headaches. And so, following reduction after reduction, the slide was finally closed completely, with the space below it dedicated to administrative offices. Looking back over its history, when people ask what happened to that lazy river slide at the World Water Park, I liken its faith to death from a thousand cuts. From the maintenance nightmare that comes with maintaining a concrete slide, through to the high cost of all the manpower required to operate the attraction. Add on some of the more injury prone areas of the slide, and then the changes that were made to address some of these issues, which in turn resulted in a less popular slide with lower ridership. Every problem that came up resulted in another blow to the slide, until it just wasn't the same attraction anymore. And today, while you make your way up to the Sun Runner, you can still see the shell of what was once the World Water Park's most iconic attraction. So, the next time you're riding one of the faster, more thrilling slides at the World Water Park, or surfing a never-ending wave, or ziplining over one of the world's largest wave pools, think back, and remember one of the original, albeit more relaxing attractions at West Edmonton Mall. Remember the vortexes and the waterfalls, the yellow and blue tubes and the concrete, the lounging pools and that crazy switchback slide. Remember Raging Rapids. Were you lucky enough to ride the original Lazy River attraction at the World Water Park? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like and a share, and maybe even visit our Patreon page. And why not check out one of our other videos, like these which showcase the movies that were filmed right here in the greatest indoor show on Earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.